Hi, and welcome to this webinar on graspable math. I'm Audrey McLaren. I've been teaching math online for Learn for 12 years. I chose to teach online and I love it, but I know this year teaching online was not a choice for most teachers. For this reason, it might not seem like the ideal time to learn a new tool. However, this one is pretty special. It's easy to learn. It's free for students and teachers. And I and my students have found that it really helped and simplified our online lives quite a bit. Before we get into the details, here's a quick look. Graspable Math lets students grasp things literally and figuratively. I can get mathematical things to happen simply by clicking or dragging terms from left to right, whether that's distribution or factoring. But whatever I ask it to do, it'll do it mathematically correctly. It'll combine fractions by getting a common denominator. But notice I have to tell graspable math what to do. It only does what you want it to do. Here's more algebra it'll do. It'll square this binomial. But also, if I drag it into this graph, I can now examine it visually as well. From the graspable math website, you can start exploring by clicking on the Explore Algebra button and that'll bring you to what's called a canvas. At the top right are buttons for management and they're pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to focus on these buttons on the top left, specifically these three buttons that I find myself constantly switching between. I'll start with the insert button. If you click on insert, you get this pull down menu and here are some of the things that you can insert directly onto the canvas. Clicking on either of the first two brings this keypad so you can type any arithmetic or algebraic expression you want in it. Here's what the text tool looks like. It's a fairly limited formatting tool, but all you can do right now is make the text bigger or smaller. YouTube video is self-explanatory. It inserts a YouTube video for you and if you click on any one of these last three, it opens a fully functioning interactive GeoGebra graph. And if you already have a GeoGebra graph that you want to insert, that's possible as well. After you've started putting a bunch of things on the canvas, it's going to get crowded. Graspable Math doesn't rearrange things for you. So that's what the Arrange button is for. Supposing I've inserted an equation, a text, and a GeoGebra graph, and I don't like the way they're arranged, I click on the Arrange button and I can now move things. I can resize them by dragging the corner. I can even delete them so I can get them to look the way I want. Now for the transform button. Here I can click on operations to get them to happen. If I click on the square, it'll do that. If I click on the multiplication, it'll do that. But if I try to do something out of order, it'll shake its head at me. So it doesn't let me make a mistake. As long as I click on operations that are possible to do, it'll do them. And it'll show me all of my steps as well. I can also transform by dragging. If I drag this four, notice that a blue line appears and it shows me what it's going to do to transform that expression algebraically appropriately. To solve an equation, there are two ways. First, I can hold down the equal sign just long enough to get the keypad to pop up and it'll ask me, what do you want to do to both sides of E, the equation? Well, I want to subtract 3x. So once it's done that, I can drag like terms together to get them to combine. Here the snap feature brings the whole term over, not just the 3 but I can also solve by dragging terms from side to side. Dragging the negative 7 caused 7 to be added to both sides. Dragging the 2 divides both sides of the equation by 2. To solve a system of equations, well, first we can drag each of the equations over into the GeoGebra graph to get an idea of roughly where those two lines meet. And now to solve the system, I can drag one y over on top of the other y and replace y with 3x plus 9. And I end up with the same equation, by the way, that we just solved up above here, for which we got a solution of 8. And by the way, here were all the steps that were involved in getting that solution. I can now drag the number 8 into the ordered pair xy that I've got waiting for it to represent the solution. I can also drag the 8 into one of the two linear equations and replace x with it so that I can figure out how much my y-coordinate of my solution is. Drag that into the ordered pair, and then drag the ordered pair into the graph. Sure enough, that's where the lines meet. There's a lot you can do and a lot your students can do just with the tools I've shown you so far. I'm going to show you a couple things that I do to start with. Here's a super sped up demonstration of the solution for a conic system where first 
the system is graphed and then we use substitution and a whole bunch of algebra to solve the resulting quadratic equation which by the way there is a built-in quadratic formula we can use. This is heavy duty algebra and students like to start out seeing it demonstrated this way before they take a crack at it themselves because there's a lot of things that can go wrong. I like to start conversations by showing them that it's fine to follow order of operations for something like this, but sometimes you can cheat the order of operations. In this case, I can square root each of the factors first and then multiply them and still get the right answer. I like to ask them, will that always happen? Is there another operation for which that will happen or won't happen? Now for what my students do with graspable math. My very first thought when I saw Graspable was how much it could simplify the process that my students and I have to go through just for them to get me their handwritten work. After all, it's not like we're in the same room and they can just hand it in to me. Online, their handwritten work has to be usually scanned somehow or faxed and then emailed to me and then I have to download it and save it and annotate it. But with Graspable Math, all they have to do is send me a link and this is typically what I'll see. Here is some work submitted by Nicholas. It looks like there's only three examples here, but because of the infinite scroll, I can add as many examples as I want. And if I want to see the work that he did to get to the final answer, I just have to pull down the double white button next to each example. It's not exactly the same as seeing his handwriting, but I can also get them to annotate their steps by using the pen tool that's built right into Graspable. So in this way, it's approximately like handwritten work, but it's completely digital and paperless. I can still see all of their steps, and more importantly, they don't have to learn any complicated math notation software, which even if they were experts, at, it would still take them a lot longer to keep retyping the same expression over and over and editing it. This way, the learning flows much more naturally. Of course, there's a lot more to learn. I'm still learning myself, so here's where you can go in case you have any future questions. If you go back to the main Graspable Math website and click where it says Learn Graspable Math, first thing you will see is these tutorial videos. There are way more of them there than are visible on this screen. They're very short and very clear. If you click where it says Common Gestures Overview, it brings you to a printable Google Doc which shows you a lot of the most frequently used gestures. It's a handy guide to have. And if you click on Interactive Gesture Library, this is a really good resource for anyone who's trying to learn, including your students. It gives them a little demonstration of a skill and then they can try it right away. A few other things I would like to show you that Graspable Math does, just to give you a little heads up, is something called the Scrub. If I click the Scrub button on this canvas, I can do Term Tracing, which looks like this. And if I drag the little arrows above and below, I can watch what happens with the rest of the equation as I change numbers. And if I do that while it's graphed, I can watch what happens algebraically and graphically. Graspable Math has also just released the beta version of their live class activities by which you can create activities for your students to do. And those activities consist of as many tasks as you want. For example, you can have them do a task on a canvas like you've just seen, or there's a task called a goal state where students are given an initial expression and they have to interact with it to get it to look like the goal state. In order to get your students in this activity, all you have to do is give them a link. And while they're working, this is what you will see. You will see who is in the task, you'll see what task they're working on, and you can click on any one of their names to see exactly what they're doing live during the class. Here are a few things that my students have said about using Graspable Math. They find it fun, they find it easy to use, they find it helpful, and they really like that it doesn't let them make a mistake. What I like about Graspable Math, apart from the things I've mentioned, it's a safe space not just from making mistakes, but it's also a safe place to do things perhaps unconventionally. Most students would probably add two to both sides of this equation, which is what we teach them. But if they wanted to divide by three, First, it's not wrong to do that. This makes sure they do it the right way, though. I also like that it removes obstacles to solving, for example, literal equations, something students typically have difficulty with. 
but it's exactly as easy for them to solve this literal equation as it would a numerical equation. Finally, I like how graspable math can become a math laboratory where students can investigate, for example, how Pascal's triangle comes from raising a binomial to higher and higher powers. Graspable math is on Twitter, so am I. They'd love to hear your ideas and questions, and so would I. Thanks for listening.